Okay, hello and uh, welcome to this uh, quick recording. My name is Wolf Karl. I'm a uh, professor and I've written um, this book. I hope everybody can see it with Craig Calcaptera, um, a book on decentralization. The reason why I'm recording this video is because there are many questions that um, Craig, has, uh, Craig and I receive on a routine basis um, on the underlying governance framework that uh, we're explaining in the book. <clears throat> and I'll put a link in the, um, in the chat as well, but, um, in the uh, video des description that is. Um, <clears throat> and so today I want to go through and explain um, the base, basic parameters of the, this uh, governance framework in a quick summary video. Um, so this will probably take me around half, half an hour or so, I hope. Um, and uh, so let's get started right away. So I will share the screen. Everybody can see this and uh, we can take it from here. Okay, so um, let's start out. So this is um, my recording of um, the 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 core the core governance underpinnings that we're describing in the book again if you want more uh, details on this um this is uh, please read the book as i as i'm describing here this is the the summary of um of the framework we're discussing in the book and then the book of course we're discussing the broader applications um of the framework so Let's start out with uh, with the basic um, theory uh, behind this. Um, so, one part, one big problem in the that we're discussing in the book is this idea and problem <laughs> really that anonymous parties cannot be trusted. Um, and this technology, uh, the, the blockchain technology, for the first time really allows uh, through reputation systems to overcome this this basic this basic problem. Now, anonymity can resolve a lot of problems for humanity, um, but in an anonymous, decentralized, and autonomous systems, you need a reputation system that helps uh, provide an eternal reputational record that is open for review, is valued uh, by self-policed positive feedback loops between users and driven by, by the proper incentives. Without that, this, this, the, the, the technology, it's, it's hard to, to use the technology and upgrade other systems um, if, you, if you don't use that, that reputation system. And the technology really facilitates that. So could have, we could talk a while about a current system and the crypto systems, but I want to go and directly into this, this basic framework here that, that we're suggesting um, in the book. So um, the DAO, um, has experts in it, people who are uh, participating in the DAO, and the DAO um, is uh, is visible if you want through the forum, right? So the, the forum can be a centralized database, or it can be ideally and ideal, ideal typically can be a blockchain. And um, the forum is can also be seen as a as a linked list of posts where the DAO uh, con contributors and members are posting their thoughts on what the what the DAO does, or what the what the DAO may be about. And there are different DAOs, different concepts, and different expertises in different DAOs, right? So, um, but the the forum is, if you want, the the visible external. Um, uh, organ of uh, through which the DAO members are engaging with the outside world and with each other. Yeah? And that engagement happens through validation pools, right? So um, the, the entire engagement with the outside world and with each other happens through voting structures. Well, uh, let's call them validation pools, right? So um, that's, the, that's the DAO universe up here um, ab above the red line. Below the red line other is the traditional business environment, right? Um, and just to be clear, the DAO here operates, uh, operates under this, um, this reputation governance system, right? So uh, you, in exchange for sharing your thoughts and in exchange for adding value to the DAO, you're gaining reputation. And I'll expl explain more, in more detail 
and how that works. The traditional business environment down here is simply uh, motivated by smart contracting in, in this case, right? So smart contracts coordinate and automate uh, other functions in society and and help business do, do business, but that is segregated for now, right? So we have smart contracting and then there's DAO governance. They're, they're, they're segregated for now. And I will explain in a second how, how you can actually overcome the divide. So, um, <clears throat> so I wanna talk a little bit about these um, uh, platform uh, architectural specifics that we're talking about in the book. And they, they really come down to this. Um, so there's, there, we, we see and we describe in the book, Craig and I, five necessities. One is the forum that I already talked about. It's the linked list. Uh, can ideally should be on the, on the blockchain, but again, it can also be on, in a centralized database, right? That, that, that emulates this. Then we have the validation pools. Um, in, so in these decentralized environments, they're consisting of potential anomalous actors. Uh, we believe that the only fair way to assign power is to allow, uh, allow all the users to judge the value of contributions democratically, right? So these are the validation pools, and I'll talk about the, um, the voting engine that, that motivates and, and empowers this in a second. Then we have necessity three, <clears throat> where these tokens, these reputation tokens, are minted in proportion to fees that are coming in. So if the DAO generates a fee that, or the, incoming value um, the the value the, the reason why reputation exists is because of the external value that comes into the DAO right that is that is a core feature of of, of this uh, governance framework right so the external fee comes in because there was value created and we talk in the in the book about how that can happen right um, because there is a priming the pump problem where you need to add value to the outside world before fees are coming in Right? And that is, that is a core, core feature and problem in the system that, that uh, has to be overcome. Now, once the fee comes in, um, the system mints uh, reputation proportional to these fees and then stakes it 50-50 in the validation pool. Yeah? So four up and down, 50% up, 50% down, and I'll walk um, the audience through how that works um, uh, later on. So the, ne the next necessity is number four is the reputational salary. So all fees should be shared with the entire group of reputation holders uh, relative to their holdings, right? So the person who has hundred reputation uh, points uh, is getting a higher salary payout than the person who has 10 reputation points out of that pool of fees that, that is held by the DAO, yeah? Um, so that's necessity four. And that is, that is uh, sometimes uh, some people struggle uh, wrapping their heads around this. This is a, this is a core feature. So we have, we have second order economic effects, right? You're not getting the fungible token directly. There may be a, a, a two token model in which one token is a, is a fungible token that may be listed, um, but that segregation, right? That, that you pay always pro proportional to the existing reputation is absolutely crucial for this design. Right. So um, in my humble opinion and, and Craig, and that's how we uh, we talk about this in the book, any any form of dilution or crossing over uh, those two effects and trying to use fungible tokens for reputation that people can sell is, in our in our opinion, just dest destroying the longevity of the design and will result result in suboptimal governance. Um, that we've seen, unfortunately, in so many other systems that are out there, right? So preserving that duality of fungible token that is used for salaries that are paid proportional to the then existing reputation is absolutely crucial uh, for, for this governance design. And in, in our opinion, should not be tempered with. Uh, if anything, we should, we should collect data on this. And, um, and uh, yeah, so data collection is absolutely essential for this, right? And then lastly, necessity five, re review through reference, right? So it should be possible to gain reputation, one, through um, adding valuable work in the DAO, two, policing other people's work in the DAO, and three, through reference. Uh, so each, um, each post that has the opportunity to reference all the posts um, in, in, on the blockchain or on the centralized database uh, in the forum, uh, which means that the changing uh, the value of the previous posts um, should be possible, but depending on how important users receive 
or sorry, perceive the, the precedent for the system, right? So um, this is a, 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 a DAC um, <clears throat> weighted acyclical digital graph. Um, and that's a system that, that Craig and I have described in several papers and are also describing in the book. Um, essential, however, is here again, the reputational salary and the, 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 the historical reference model in necessity five is upgrading that um, and, and helps create stability for the system. Okay, so um, back to this, uh, this idea here that um, we, have, uh, we have the DAO and the DAO interacts uh, through the forum uh, with the outside world and the experts in the DAO um, are getting reputation uh, for their engagement. Now, um, this, this, so again, there's still the segregation. Um, if the outside world over time appreciates the, the ideas that are presented by the DAO, there are many different business opportunities that are being generated um, by DAOs currently. So in this um, governance framework, it is, it is possible that the outside world sees this, let's say this is a software validation DAO, for instance, right? Sees this as a, um, as a collective of experts that are very, uh, very, very good at, at, at software evaluation and uh, an external business party recognizes that and wants to do business with the DAO, yeah? So that is possible. They can see um, on, on the forum that is fully, fully transparent and public on the blockchain or on, a, on a, an open source database, they can see what the DAO stands for, what products they, um, they have generated. And as the, the appreciation grows for those products, there, there, there may be demand for, from the business community to, um, to engage with the DAO. And that is, that is possible, right? Um, that, is, that is possible in, in this design. And the, the, the governance framework is, has actually been built uh, around this idea. So um, how might that happen? Well, the, the, the outside business world may offer a fee. That's the fee we talked about earlier um, and sends a fee to, to the DAO. So what happens uh, when the fee hits the DAO? Well, um, it is conceivable that one expert, let's call the expert N, uh, makes an offer and, and says, yes, I would like to work for this fee. I would like to be selected um, and generate the fee for the DAO. And, but this is crucial. The, the expert works, and the fee is generated for the DAO, not for the individual expert, right? Um, and many, many people often misunderstand what that means. Uh, so, so the expert here does the work on behalf of the DAO, and the DAO is policing the work of, the, of their member expert member. Um, um, and the, the, the fee flows to the DAO as a collective. So um, how might this work? So um, the random expert is now called and stakes reputation to be randomly weighted selected. Uh, now, of course, if, if you stake randomly weighted, uh, in a randomly weighted selection pro process, you stake 60 and the next uh, lowest person stakes 20, you have a, the 60 person has a high, higher uh, random uh, weighted uh, likelihood to be selected for this job. Hence, expert N here is selected. The person provides off-chain work. Um, and as the work is performed under the smart contract uh, with uh, the external parties, the person uh, expert N here is now providing the, uh, the evidence of the work to the collective, right? On the forum through which the DAO, um, DAO members interoperate, the expert provides now the evidence of the work and everybody can see it. What happens is that the other members of the DAO um, are now providing comments, right? So we have the person doing the work, providing evidence of the work performed, the persons who, who are part of the DAO who, who need to police uh, that person's work in order to make sure that the DAO works uh, quality is maintained. Um, they're now providing comments on the forum um, pertaining to that particular post of expert and, and uh, evidence of work. And as that materializes um, in the, by way of a validation pool, the DAO now votes on the and this is a policing vote, right? So uh, the DAO votes on uh, the, the performance of the work. The upvote would mean, yes, you did quality work that stands for all of us. Every, every single person here um, would subscribe to this. 
And um, the no vote would mean no. This 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 work was was uh, inappropriate. Uh, we do not st stand by this. This was bad work. It makes all of us look bad. We we are not supporting this, right? So as a result, let's say there's a there's an upvote in this example. The reputation tokens are not now awarded. Now they are awarded, and this is I'll explain the breakdown um, in a second. They they are awarded to the expert, but also uh, to the collective. Uh, these reputation tokens, right? So, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain the, the breakdown in a second. Now, the, the, the collective and the expert as part of the collective are getting paid in dollars, getting paid out uh, proportional to their reputation, right? So it's key for us to understand how does this process from receiving reputation, getting reputation enhancement to getting paid in dollars or, you know, fungible tokens proportional to your, to your reputation. How does that work? So let's walk through this, um, this validation pool that, that I highlighted earlier. So we have here what, what we would call typically the OP, the original proposer saying, yes, I want to do the work. Here's my reputation. Here's 10, please select me. And then, um, uh, that, that, so that's, that 10 is automatically in this validation pool staked up on behalf of the original proposal, right? The, however, we also know that there's a fee coming in for which the OP is working. That fee results in a, in, in a reputation minting process, right? So where we have, um, you know, and it, it depends on whether you, how the, the minting ratio is set in the respective DAO. In this example, we are doing a one-to-one, -one, right? Many, many DAOs will do a one to a thousand or, or higher, depending on how, how many fees are generated and how they, how they wish to run the DAO, right? That's a, that's a DAO decision. That's a, that's a governance um, a metric that has to be decided by the DAO. So in this example, the, the incoming fee that's generated because the OP is, is willing to do the work is 100, which results in 100 reputation points. The system automatically upstakes 50 and downstakes 50. So in this example, the 50 that goes up is added to the to the prior 10 that we've seen here, which makes the upstake uh, 60 and um, the the downstake uh, 50. Right. So um, <clears throat> by default here in the default scenario, uh, we always do 50 50. Um, however that in this, in this case, it results in a 60% upstake and a 50% downstake. Now, the, so we know the OP has 60 rep. Uh, we know in the validation pool, the downstake is also 50 um, in this pool. So now we have evidence of work and the OP says, hey, he, here's what I did. And people are looking at the, this and there's one supporter who stakes three reputation tokens up says yes this is this this was valid work uh, the op did well this represents the dao and the dao quality of work so now we have 63 now we have another supporter with four uh, we get to 67 uh, 67 um, reputation is staked up we still have 50 down now we have some detractors detractor one comes in with minus two down stake and um, we have another detractor uh, who feels stronger and says, no, this is not representative of the DAO. Um, this is a, a minus seven, a, a negative vote against the OP's work. Now, what happens in this validation pool is the following. We have the, the reputation from the, from, the, from the detractors is because they lost in this pool, right? The, the uh, 67 um, upstake is higher than the 59 downstake. Uh, what happens is we see the reputation from the, from the losing side being shared with um, proportional to the, the upstakes of the work <clears throat> in the winning side, right? So what, what does this mean? Well, it means that in this example, the OP gets a significant reputation bounce, right? Um, so the OP moves from 60 up to, to 95 in this case, proportional share, right? Because uh, OP has, has done the work and um, provided a 10% a, a um, availability stake. So 60 moves to 95 um, and supporter one has three up that moves to 13. 
proportional share and again uh, supported support um, um, two um, has four up and is now participating at 18. The detractors are losing their reputation. So this is a quick summary of, um, of the, the, the baseline metric um, in, in the system. If you have any questions, um, I, I would please feel free to contact me. Uh, again, my name is Wolf Karl. Uh, Craig Calcaterra and I have written the book. Um, so, and I'll put some context deta details in, in the, in the, uh, the video description. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, again, a uh, quick reminder, this is the book, and this was a, um, so the book's title is Decentralization, Technology's Impact on Organizational and Societal Structure, and this video is intended to illustrate the basic uh, governance framework. So thank you very much for your attention, and I will, I look forward to, um, to, any, to, to answering any questions. Thank you.